product. Their product being money. Very powerful, very effective tool. But their their time is running out because people are getting smart. They're realizing this is this is this is twilight zone on steroids. I mean, when they're spraying the skies, you can find all the information online. Chem trailing, high altitude aerosolized spraying, geoengineering. Look up some of these terms. Look up images of planes that are outfitted to spray the skies. The whole idea, the concept, the theory is that these aluminum particulate matter, mixture of other stuff, you can read for yourself, uh, deflects the sun. So that's going to cool the earth. That's the justification, and all that product falls back down to the ground, poisoning us, our brains, dementia, Alzheimer, all this stuff's through the roof. Sick, man. And not a whisper on the mainstream media, not a whisper. But it's all out there. That's, I mean, that's just en emblematic, indicative of the bigger picture, what's going on on the financial realm. This is the big deal. This is a big deal. They do not want us to unite, okay, finance, under the banner of simple social financial fairness, okay? Socioeconomic justice, fairness, not for some, but for everybody, okay? You understand, if people could really see the way things would be, if they just let things like supply and demand capitalism work, your money will automatically, organically, go up in worth gradually over time. Why? Because we, as a society, have found over thousands of years, this has been going on, progress it's called, easier and easier methods to produce not only all we want to need as a population of the earth, but an excess an abundance, a superfluity of all the things we need, first and foremost, yes. There was a glut of housing, you wouldn't know it, because it's just like diamonds. They can warehouse and the investors buy everything up, and they can sit on them and manipulate markets, fix prices, rig prices, and get whatever they want. The same is going on with housing. It's the same thing. You, sh you should today, with the amount of housing on Earth, be able to move anywhere on this planet you want, live as long or short as you want to, and move on anywhere you want, do whatever you want. You serve society any way you choose, at any given time you choose, for as long or short as you choose. End of story. It's your life. You're only answerable to your own conscience, to God, to loving God, just proving you love God above all else, doing that, and then going out and loving each other, really caring about your fellow man. It's the greatest honor, the, the greatest form of gratification, satisfaction we can have is pleasing God. And if that means serving each other, using our God-given talents, using our brain, the wherewithal he gave us. I mean, you know, who doesn't have more than one hobby? I, I, I don't know what people do with all their time, but I feel like I got time coming out the yin-yang to have fun and do stuff. And it, it, There's just all this stuff to do in life. It's so interesting. You know, I love, I love to exist as a human being, and I want to live forever as a human being, and that's the promise. There'll be a whole generation, it says, like I was talking about earlier, and I digressed, but that we'll never taste death. They won't even know what the first death it's called. That's the physical death, the mortal body and all that, this body of death I talked about earlier. They'll never even know that. They'll morph, basically, into um, an immortal body, an imperishable body, as Scripture puts it, whereby death is swallowed up in victory. But if you put yourself in God's position, and it all starts clicking, man. It all starts making sense. You say, well, wait, that's right. God, it, there's no way I can imagine exhaust how good God is. I know that each and every good quality characteristic and attribute comes from above, that I can understand and comprehend these good things. And then I see them in other people, and I realize that God is just like the best set of parents that anybody could ever imagine, way better than any mortal parent. Biological, foster, adoptive, whatever, 
somebody that took you under their wing. Why? Because God can literally save my life and very much wants to and wants me to turn to him for the solace, the relief from this thing we call death and just say, I got to trust something and I got nothing because I sure as hell didn't create myself. I didn't even create my brain, nothing else about me. I don't own me. It isn't my life. Of course, I should seek to please God above all else. And then, of course, I should then, if God says, well, then go and love your fellow man. Love them like yourself. Live by the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated in all your affairs. Of course, your business affairs. Get away from money. You could do it gradually. I've given you the smarts to do it. Why can't you live just like all the other creatures? Why can't you have universal freedom and prosperity and security? Why? Who says so? Uh, some pissant sitting in his ivory tower at the uppermost echelons of power in this world, worshiping at the Bohemian Grove, the skull and bones, or God knows whatever secret societies he got going on. Nobody believes the official 9-11 story to this day. Nobody believes the official JFK assassination to this day. Oh, uh, what's his name? Lee R. Harvey Oswald did it. Yeah, this patsy. Amazing how he was assassinated shortly, isn't that? Oh, well, I just had so much hatred in my heart. This nutbag, they wound up like a clock. This was Sirhan, Sirhan. Truth is stranger than fiction. You can't write a book about this crap. It's so absurd. But, um, you know, what we have, friends, is silent collusion. You understand, it just takes a couple of special interest groups. You take the money industry, lending, and then you take a couple out with the real estate industry. These people have been working in lockstep, okay? And if I was going to write a book, I'd title it Silent Collusion because they don't need to talk about it. That would be against the law to collude. Oh, no, you can't do that. Manipulate markets. Fixed prices, rig prices. This is an essential human need. Well, imagine if the investors did that with the food. Huh? Think, think, dum dums. It's an essential human need, so it's a fair comparison with food. Yet the mainstream media is going to educate us. And what is information? Don't they give you information? The news. That's an education. Education, information, one and the same. And they got us all believing because their boss the owners of these mainstream media outlets. That's who's going to decide who's president because all the reporters know which side their bread is buttered on. They want to please their boss. Please my boss, my master. So, of course, they're going to just leave that, even if on a subliminal, semi-conscious level, they can't help it because they love money. See, that's what taints our hearts and minds. It's, it's sick. We can't go that direction, man. But we could get off money gradually because of supply and demand principles. That's their worst nightmare of these evil men. They would hate that scenario. See, they'd be miserable. They'd be miserable in heaven. So if you're God, what are you going to do? You see, in every instance you can imagine, you want the right opinion on stuff where it's undebatable. You realize, I got the right opinion because the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of truth gave it to me. And I know it's perfectly logical and simple. I know that a child can understand the logic and reason. Based on things like fairness, little kids understand fairness, right? When you play a game, they don't want someone else cheating. They, they're smart. They know the possibility. So, no, everybody wants the game played fair, but it's not. It's rigged, utterly rigged, and it's sick, and it's very ex ex exclusionary. A very exclusionary society has been growing. That wealth imbalance that I'm always alluding to, that discrepancy, that just grown. It's gotten more and more acute my whole life since the assassination of JFK. Any detective, the first thing they learn about when they go to criminology school, wherever they go to, to learn about this stuff, the motive, they always check, you know, sometimes it's obvious it was crime of passion, jealousy or something, right? But um, the other time, it's almost always about money. Who's going to benefit financially? Knowing that the president, JFK, was in the process. It was happening, man. It was really happening. He was getting rid of the Federal Reserve. He was already issuing a new dollar. Understand the implications. You think our country wasn't taken over by these people? Evil. It's like Satan himself took over America. We've been doing nothing but going down the 
tubes my whole life in terms of social economic fairness and justice for all. The American precepts and principles, basic bedrock of this nation. Everybody deserves a shake at being happy. And what do we want to be happy? We want financial security. We want financial freedom. We want prosperity. We want security. Of course we do. Everybody does, duh. And But you would deny it to others so that you can have more of it? And you're going to answer on the day of judgment when it all comes clear and clear. It wasn't your life. You couldn't save your life. Your kids couldn't save your life. Your spouse couldn't save your life. Your parents couldn't save your life. Your friends couldn't save your life. Nobody could save your life. Your life was in the hands of the one that gave you life, the creator God Almighty. Judgment day, the day of reckoning, when we give account for our belief system, will they hold water? For our values, will they hold water? Are we on the same page? Are we seeing through God's eyes? As simple as it is how a child can. Only good, inexhaustible goodness and righteousness and pureness. And we're so far from it as humans. I feel very far from it. I'm flawed up the yin-yang. And like I said, it comes from the original sin, the fall of man. Our relationship with our owners got off to a very rocky start, to put it mildly. God was sorry he created us. That's how badly we hurt him. When we separated ourselves, when we disobeyed, the instruction to not partake of this fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It really screwed up our thousands of years to come. There was a curse upon the earth. Evil got power. That's the only way to explain all the bad things in this world because God is responsible for only all the good to be praised and thanked for that, but none of the bad. That comes down to free will choice and our ancestors choosing wrongly. There could be countless, I can't count, God can count, have inhabited planets around this universe. The only difference is I'm very likely, very similar to flora and fauna, some variations, I don't know, God's an artist. Uh, God's inexhaustible in his imaginative creative ability as far as I, I don't I'm in awe I don't know okay but they have a different history that's what makes them distinct and unique and individual from the history of us earthlings you understand so our history because there's no way I could explain it okay uh, uh, an atheist would be able to slam me in a debate okay He'd say well you're God you know what I think this all loving all powerful God he's an a-hole let me point to the reasons why. Natural disasters. A freaking mosquito can kill you, you godlike creature. Yeah, your God loves you. Yeah, God's so powerful, he cares about you. He allows all these wars. He allows these natural disasters. Look at this punishing heat killing people. He allows that. He could control the temperature. How about the gravity? It's too harsh. He could control that. Hey, it's bitter cold. He could control that. What's wrong? You God's a feckless pustule. That's what I think of your plea. So that's why I say God doesn't exist, because I'm a hell of a lot better than God. I've got more ethics and moral on my little finger than your so-called all-loving, all-powerful God. But I have to go back to the original sin, the fall of man. When God was sorry, he created us. It says he repented. Thank God he didn't give up on us. His amazing grace kicked in, and he put a plan into action, but it was going to take... Thousands of years, like getting over anything, like a disease. This curse was like a disease on us. On the whole planet, all creation, it is written, groans under the weight of sin. We probably brought death to all the other creatures. You see, God could populate a planet and then pull the, if there's no death, God simply pulls a fertility plug. You understand? So we don't need the whole predator-prey uh, paradigm at all pattern we don't need that at all you understand it's just that god can control the fertility right if you're god almighty you could do anything you gave the fertility you could certainly take it away you get what i'm saying so friends the only road to happiness is caring about other people's happiness and i care about binding the wound 
where it's hemorrhaging, the wound on the collective body of humanity, caring about the least of men. And that's who's suffered the most. That's who's borne the most burden. I mean, could you imagine yourself or your children sleeping out in the cold, desperate, not knowing where their next meal or bed, no place to lay your stuff, their stuff, your kids? God, I mean, just see through God's eyes and you'll see what, why there's this curse upon our nation and upon our civilization at large because America's influenced the whole world. We're, so we're screwing it up everywhere. We're the world's reserve currency. We're the most coveted nation to come to of all the nations. Nobody want, oh, wants to move to Greece or Italy. <laughs> Who wants to move to Malta or, you know, I can't even speak the language or, you know, anywhere else 